Hey y'all. So today I'm going to be working on these <laughs> little shakers. I love them so much. They are they are my life right now. I love them. You just ah uh, I I just love them so much. I've got a frog. I've got a little octopus. I've got a bear and a duck. I had another duck, but the it sold, right? It was great. <laughs> but I love them. Uh, so I'm going to be showing a tutorial on how to make these. This is not going to be an exact pattern. Um, cause y you might not be able to find the exact size of the stuff that I got for the inside. Uh, but uh, you could take these steps that I've done to make your own little shaker toy. I like the flat bottoms. Just saying this out, right? You might be able to find other shapes, but I really like the flat bottom just so they can sit on your desk. Like, they can, they can sit up, they can stare at you while you get your work done. I love it. I think it's cute. So, these are the ones that I have. They're little cupcake holders. You're supposed to make cupcakes and put them on there. They're a little difficult to get apart sometimes. Here's the top, and here's the bottom. So, what I do on mine is I fill them up with these little pellets. You could fill it with beans, whatever you have on hand. I like those weighted beads. I think they're really good. Uh, then I will put hot glue around this just so it stays, and then I'll put the base on. I would just put it like this, but I don't trust it to not come undone because you could squeeze this and the lid goes away. So, I hot glue it with the beads and stuff in there, and then I'll crochet around. I have one right here, already done, that I'll be working on today. Some of the beads did get stuck on the hot glue, which is fine. No one's going to see it, because it's going to be inside of the little shaker. You can also get the ones from the pin pinball machines, prize wins, what are they called? I don't know. I forget what they're called, but you can get a little capsule, close it. I'm not going to close them yet, because it's really hard to get these open. <laughs> So you can use these as well. You can buy them on bulk on Amazon. I bought these on Amazon. So I'm going to recreate this little frog because I really want to keep this one. I think he is absolutely adorable. I might actually want to keep the uh, the bear too because, oh my god. Like, I made the other duck. I wish I kept the other duck. I, I, I love this duck, but he might go. I might sell him. <laughs> but I might keep the little bear and the little frog. They are... They're my precious, precious babies. Okay, you can kind of take any amigurumi that you want and kind of base it off of that. So if you already have an idea in mind, like you want to make a bee or you want to make a strawberry and it fits your shape of your little shake thing, you can make it shape of that. I'm going to be starting with this frog. I already have my green. I'm going to be using a 3.5 millimeter hook. That's just because that's what I like for amigurumi. I would suggest nothing above a 4.5 if that's what you're used to, and it fits a yarn size. So I'm going to start off with a normal magic ring. For this one, I'm going to be doing a single crochet 6 inside of my magic ring. You could do whatever fits you the easiest. This is not going to be any kind of pattern necessarily, it's just going to be me showing you how to do this. So you don't have to follow it exact. You should be more worried about the size of your shaker and what fits the shaker that you have. So now I'm just increasing all the way around because I want to have this round dome at the top. Uh, just like this one, you can kind of see it here. So I'm just increasing. I'm going to do the very basic... Uh, after the increase row, single crochet one, then increase, and then single crochet two, then increase all the way around. I am not going to be uh, slip stitching and joining, but of course you could do it however you want. And basically what you're going to want to do is cover, keep going until it covers the top of your uh, shaker. You can also do it from the bottom or any side that you want, but I find this to be the most round. I know that that will fit the shape, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to speed this up until I have enough to cover. Okay, so I have the top. What I did is single crochet up to a 
three and then increase on my rows. I did a single crochet and then I I did a couple increases in between all of the sing single crochets just to make sure it fit all the way around. So now I'm going to just increase all the way down up until uh, this little rim right here. Okay, so here it is, fitting over the uh, little shaker bit. Uh, it is a little wonky here. You'll see it doesn't exactly ro go over, but as you see on the others, it does come up in this one. So that's just to be expected, and it's fine. I didn't bother with increasing or anything. I just stretched it over, uh, and I think it looks fine. So I'm going to single crochet around just a little bit more. Okay, so this is over, and I'm just stretching it over. I did take it apart to do the single crochets around, so the stitches aren't looking too stretched. Although they do look a little bit stressed just with how it is, but there is definitely a row over that I can work with outside of it. So I am not struggling too hard. So I'm going to single crochet around. I'm doing in both posts. You could, you could probably do it in all sorts of different ways, uh, but this is the way I do it. You could potentially do it in the back loop, but because I have a flat surface on mine, I'm not too worried about it. I feel like that fits best when you don't already have an inside that is very shapely. Of course, if your little capsule inside is different, uh, a different shape, different sizes, uh, you will do this part a little differently. Uh, just kind of eyeball it and it'll turn out perfectly fine. All right, so I've been around at least once now. I've not really been counting where my rows start and end. I don't think it too much matters. I'm going to go around one more time before I start to decrease. Okay, so the, here we go. I know it's about time to start decreasing it because it's getting a lot softer and not as hard uh, to the base. Uh, there seems to be a lot more stitches uh, than there is space. Not too much, but it's starting to get there, so I think now is a good time to start decreasing. So I'm going to single crochet a few. I'll start with four. No, well, let's start with three. And then I'll do a decrease just like I did on the increase. Of course, because I'm eyeballing this, I'm also eyeballing the decreases. Uh, this is uh, just what I've done on the others. I think this yarn is a bit thinner than the yarn I've worked on, say, with the duck. So it is a little bit different of an outcome. Alright, so that's the end of that row. I'm going to continue decreasing, but I'm going to do a decrease single crochet too. Okay, so I'm about in the next row. Um, I'm going to start decreasing around because I have a lot of stitches just popping up and we're getting close to the middle. So I think I could just start decreasing all the way around and skip that decrease one uh, row. Okay, so here we go. And I know I can just use for what we have here. So I'm going a slip stitch and I'm going to cast off. And 
And I'm going to take my handy dandy yarn needle, darning needle, whatever it's called. And sew up these stitches on the bottom so it lays nice and flat. Looks like that. I'll weave in the ends. And this is our base for our little shaker. Now you can add anything you want to your base. I'm going to be using this as the frog because you can never have enough frogs. So I'm going to start on the arms first. Uh, this is pretty easy. Uh, of course, you can do it any way you want. It doesn't have to look like mine, but I am going to show you the tutorial on how to make one that looks like mine. So I will start with the arms using my 3.5 hook again, starting with a magic ring of five this time. And pull it tight. And I'm going to do a single crochet and then increase row. I'm starting with a single crochet increase. Uh, you will get a different look if you do start with an increase. Uh, I advise against starting with an increase for various reasons. Um, but for this, you will have a different number. Your arms will be wider, which if you want wider arms for this, you can start with an increase. Uh, but I will not be doing that for this video. So I'm going to pull it tight. And I'm going to single crochet around. I think this is a very basic beginner type of tutorial type of thing for arms. You just increase your single crochet around a couple of rows for an arm. You can do this for feet too. You can do this. Um, it's very great for beginners where you just crochet some arms, crochet some legs, make kind of like little balls, nubs, something like this. I'm going to be going a little bit longer on mine though. Attach it to a ball and then you're good to go. But that is kind of how you make the arms. I might make these a little nubbier than this. Let's see how it looks. Um, just so it's different, we could. So I am, I'm going to go a little bit longer still. I'm going to do maybe like one more row. To see these frogs can be brothers and not distant relatives. So this is about right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, this isn't going to be a pattern. This is just a rough estimate. I'm not counting my stitches or my rows or I'm just showing you about how I do mine. I kind of like the way that they look a little different and lopsided. I think they kind of add to the charm of the cute little grungy kind of. I think they, they go well with that. So we need to make another arm. We're going to follow the exact same thing as the before. That is why I think it is important to kind of notice your stitches as you do them at least long enough to remember what you've done. And these are our arms. And we're going to go ahead and sew them in our little base. So here we are just crocheting around, sewing it down into the stitches below. It's a little tricky just because it is a big old plastic thing so you can't really go as far down as you might have without there being a big old shaker in between. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to weave in my ends just like this. And now we're going to take the other arm and do the exact same thing. Okay, so here he is right here. He's a very happy looking frog. I could force these down, maybe sew them down, but I like them up. It makes him look like a really happy frog. I like me a happy frog. 
So next we're going to work with the eyes since we still have the green right here. So I'm going to kind of do what I did with the arms, but I'm going to be using them to be a lot rounder. So I'm going to start with a magic ring of six. Then we increase, single crochet, increase all the way around. Of course, you could do it however you'd like. As long as you are happy with your project, that's all that matters. So I'm going to single crochet down. Oh, actually, you know, because I want these to be bigger, I don't want them to be too much. I'm going to throw in two increases into this just so that it kind of rounds out a bit more. So I will probably be doing a two single crochet increase. I think that will give me what I want. If not, uh, just single crochet and double crochet, not double crochet. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? And just increase uh, in a few places. And you should be good to go. Just remember what you did so you can do it on the other eye. I am going along with the single crochet to an increasing around. I think that's easier to remember. And I think that's going to give us our best look. So now I'm going to single crochet down a few rows for the eyes. Okay, so I have the eyes done. Now go up top just like that. I'm going to add the safety eyes into here and it'll be around just like that. In these to look like that. Okay, so the eyes are on. They are looking like eyes. I'm going to take some yellow. Okay, and now we're going to work on the belly of him this little bit right here so i'm gonna use a magic ring again and i'm going to make the magic ring with five mm, let's do six single crochets pull it tight and i will increase around you're gonna want this bit to lay flat you don't want it to be too curvy. I'm going to single crochet and increase around now. You kind of want to check every once in a while to make sure it's the right size that you'd want. I think this is going to be good because we still want room for the mouth. So I'm going to use this. If you would like, you can always flatten out the edge but I don't think I'm going to for this one. So I'm going to cast off. Give a good enough long tail. And I'm going to sew this bad boy. All right, so we finished with this little belly. He's looking pretty cute. So we're gonna make the little mouth now. So I'm gonna get some red. All right, and here's his little mouth. So it looks just like this. I'm going to finish up this little bit. All right, and here is what he looks like. He looks like a really happy little frog. And of course, exactly like this one, but I think it's still pretty good. And it shakes. I hope you liked this little tutorial on how to make your own little shaker. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this one. It's so hard if you don't write down the pattern to remake something exactly how it is whenever you made it the first time. 
but I still think it's really cute. He's kind of got that little charm to him. I will probably try to make it again with more of the paint box yarn, which I used on this one. I think it turned out a little bit better uh, than this one, but this one's fine. I used red heart yarn, not to compare the both yarns for how it looks, because I think it has to do a lot with the patterns that I made, but I think that it looks fine. I think it's nice and cute. I think he looks really cute next to his little duck friend. So I hope you like this tutorial. Bye.